Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to the Inspired Conversation Show. I'm your host, Linda Joy, best-selling publisher at the boutique hybrid publishing house, Inspired Living Publishing. I'm also the publisher of Aspire Magazine, the premier inspirational digital magazine for women since 2006. You can grab your free subscription, which includes over 40 transformational gifts, at subscribe to aspire.com. You know, I've had animals in my life all my life. When I was young, we used to race horses, and we had goats and dogs. And as an adult, I've had um, two dogs, which we had for 15 and 16 years. And now we have a two kitties. One is 17 and one is 8. And they are a part of my family. They are, um, sometimes i got to say, you know, we might like them better than humans sometimes, right? But have you ever wondered, like I have, what is my pet thinking? How is she feeling? I've discovered that we're not alone in having those thoughts. And today's conversation is to share the good news that it is possible to intuitively communicate with your pets. Joining me today is a good friend, best-selling author Mary Beth Decker, an intuitive animal communicator and founder of sacredgrove.com, where people and pets heal and connect. Her book, Peace in Passing, Comfort for Loving Humans During Animal Transitions, is available on Amazon. Mary Beth is a retired Navy officer who lives with a husband, two dogs, three cats, and she's just extraordinary. She has two master's degrees and is currently a teacher trainer in Joan Renquet's Communicating with All Life University. She just loves, as you'll discover, working with people who love their animals Um, as much as or even more than the humans in their lives. And she uses her sacred abilities to address animals' issues which disrupt any joyful cohabitation and loving connections with their humans. Welcome, Mary Beth. Oh, thank you for that introduction. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. You know, I've loved our conversations, and we have many mutual friends, so I get to... Also, along with knowing you as a friend, know of some of the people that you've helped. Like, you know, Debbie just raves about the work you've done with her, with her cat. But when did you realize that you could communicate with animals? Well, you know, it's a story I don't get tired of telling because it's uh, different than what people think they're going to hear. And uh, it it actually, I wasn't born. It's like... I a little bit of humor coming out. I did not come out of the womb communicating with animals. You know, that's <laughs> not my story. Uh, but but it actually started to happen after I, I became a Reiki master. And um, the, the accurate way, I'd say, is at that point, my dogs started communicating with me. And um, I had some extraordinary experiences with um, a couple dogs who had passed, and a dog um, who was still, and a couple dogs who were still on the planet. Um, And, um, well, you know, one of them was my dog, Timmy, who had passed a while back, and I was at the stove, and I look over the corner of my eye, and and he's a a full-body apparition. It's as if the boy is sitting in my dining room. I'm like, oh, Timmy, oh, and I look over at him, and he's gone. Um, and I'm like, oh, well, I got to get dinner. <laughs> you know, it's like a, it, it was exciting. I found out um, in, in that moment that um, our animals survived death. They love us to enough uh, to show themselves, and they care about us. You know, and that was like in an instant. I knew all that. 
it was and, just um, it was just because of his love for you and he just came did he do you believe yeah. he knew you would be able to see him you know i wonder those things no i don't i don't know i think he was i think there was absolute hope cuz i i have a feeling he was probably around before but but something with um the attunements and you know I, I think it's something each person has different gifts right that show up different ways but i i think he was pleased too he's like wow she saw me yay yeah that's how i, I that's how i i feel is the excitement was on both ends right like it makes you oh, wonder how many times he was there before that be prior to the reiki attunement that you saw him. Oh, absolutely. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've heard of um, people, and I have some friends, that some people, they hear, but they might not see. That's another form of animal communication, right? Absolutely. Um, it, it, just uh, when you're talking about telepathy or, or intuition, um, there, there's there's many ways that people, people hear them. Um, people hear their animals. Uh, you know, I heard a report a couple nights ago where her animal who has passed, she feels her dog sitting on her feet, which he used to do when he was alive, you know. Um, so you get that feeling. Of, you know, my mother-in-law used to feel when her cat jumped on the bed and came and slept next to her. She, there was actually a physical feeling. See, for me, I can remember um, about six years ago, we lost both our pets within eight weeks. They were elderly. Uh, one was 17 and one was 15 and a half. But the, here's the funny thing. My office has rug, but the rest of the house is hardwood floors. And mm-hmm. as far out as a year, and of course, when you have pets in hardwood floors, you hear the click, click, click of their little toenails yep. when they're going everywhere. There would be so many times I'd be working and I would hear the click, 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 right? Oh, and yeah. I would automatically just look up and go, oh, Freckles, I know you're here. And other times in the midst of work, I would find myself reaching down to the side of my office chair because I always did that for 17 years to pat Freckles because he always laid next to my office chair. And there were yeah. times I could feel like I was being led to do that. Like it was so intuitive and natural two years later to reach down And in those moments, I choose to believe it was him and I just connecting and and spending that that moment together. Absolutely, you know. And um, when I talk to people about these experiences, I I say, you know, don't think it's your imagination or it's your you know you miss them. I think they made the effort to come through, thank them, and ask for more. Don't doubt it. (laughs) Yeah. It's like be yeah, with it's it, such a right? Wondrous experience, right? Yes, yes. And say, oh my goodness, there is, you know, they, I got it. I, I saw, I felt, I, um, you know, I heard. Thank you so much. And that's the beautiful part, and and that's what I've been doing there. Like I said, they've been gone about six years because for two reasons. I choose to believe that they're with us, so I want to acknowledge that love, right, to them. Yeah. And on the flip side. Um, and I'll get emotional, it's, it fills my heart with love to know that that love crosses all boundaries, right? So it's a gift yes. for both of us, the animals and the humans. It, it is, oh, it's absolutely, and, um, and again, you, I like the way you say it, I choose to believe that that connection is eternal because uh, souls are eternal, and so... Uh, you know, people talk about soul families. Gee, I didn't know we were going to go here, but they usually think about humans. But I think our soul families families include our animals. Oh, Dana and I and deeply, they're... deeply believe that. Our seventeen-year-old cat. Oh yeah. We know. I mean, he looks into our eyes, and it's we can't explain it. But Dana and I deeply believe that we our pets are part of our family. We make decisions based. Yep around them as if they were a child, right? And yeah. maybe I wasn't that way with animals. I didn't have the depth of connection when I was younger. And when I say younger, like you know, 20s and under, than I do now because I have a reverence for all life. And how can you look into the eyes of any animal and not see yeah. them 
for who the essence of who they are. And that's why I love the work you're doing in the world. Because, you. oh, you're welcome. You bring peace to families. And why don't we, we're going to jump to the break that right now so then we can dive in deeper into the next question I have for you. And I want to learn more about how your work transitioned over time to the beautiful healing work you're doing with pets that are in transition um, and about to pass over. Because what a gift you have for this in your book that you wrote. But the, the piece that you're helping with the animals as well as the humans. So Mary Beth will talk about that when we come back from our break. All righty. And we'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me today is Mary Beth Decker of sacredgrove.com. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is OTRFM. Part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to the Inspired Conversations Radio Show. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is best selling author and intuitive animal communicator, Mary Beth Decker of SacredGrove.com. So, Mary Beth, you shared that Hi. first experience, but how did everything unfold that you started helping animals cross over to the Rainbow Bridge? Um, you know, it was, so I started, you know, in my, I started with healing of humans and then it went to animals and then I got the intuition that kicked in to be able to communicate with them. I, I, I think I'm going to guess that the, that my own experience with death, um, made me more open uh, to the whole process, I I had lost my husband when he was uh, a forty. It's twenty years this year, forty five, and my kids were eight and ten. And um, that grieving process, living through that, opened me up in a very new way to um, to the gifts of of losing some someone and seeing that there they that there's gifts in that. And then so I had a I I don't. I think it, there was a comfortability with death, having walked through that experience and 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 taken it in fully over these those years. So when when I when animals were, are transitioning, I'm not um, I'm pulled towards them rather than away from them. I'm willing to I'm willing to be in the experience with them, and the fact that uh, I found that I I can do something useful. Uh, like 
I can tell them, I can tell them when it's time to go, you need to step out of your body. Like, you know, you probably stepped out of the house or you stepped out of the car or, you know, into the backyard or, you know, something. And I can actually give them energy healing through the process so that uh, it's very, the fear is minimized and the the ease goes really, really gently. I saw that I could, I could do that. And and then I also could comfort the human, the person that's that's grieving, um, and let them know how it was going. Um, that that seemed to be a very easy piece for me. Not I am definitely not hard hearted. It's not like this is easy, but it it seems like that's my calling. It's your sacred gift. It it is. I feel like I'm a doula, you know, for bringing you know animals into their next life, you know, out of, out of the physical and back into the spirit. Um, you know, that's my, I think that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. We actually had a holistic vet here. Um, we wanted when it was time and we knew, um, she was in the living room and all surrounded by love and cuddles and crying. And we had a holistic Mm. vet, you know, come for the passing. So it was sacred, right? Um, in the arms of love. A moment ago, Mary Beth, you mentioned, which is another element that you bring into your work, which I think is powerful. You mentioned energy healing. And if I'm correct, you, it's energy healing on the animals, but also you offer it for the humans. I do. Um, you, uh, you know, it's, it, I think of when I work with the animals, it's, it's, I think of it as a family situation. And so in many in many situations, uh, there is healing. There's the, the human the emotions are are the p- people's emotions are so present and and difficult. You know, especially with when the when the animal's body is deteriorating or and, or it's time to go. So um, I give the gift of com- you know peaceful comfort and um, helping them release some of the actually guilt uh people have guilt about about having to make the decision to let their animals go and worry about whether they made the right decision i i do it's more than just talking them through it i actually do energy healing for them so that they can feel in their heart uh that it's it's all good and that they can be present for for the transition and even be open to connecting with their animal afterwards. Um, and I also do this for animals that are going, you know, that aren't. aren't yeah, that aren't transitioning. In other words, and I was going to bring right. that up because one of the things, that, and I think that's our mutual friend Debbie when I heard it because I know her cat's a little rascal because I have one that looks just like him. And, um, <laughs> and you were helping um, Debbie and her pet go through a transition. He was acting up and acting different. And yep. I thought I was like, whoa, right? Because um, I know the result yeah. because of what it went through. So you, even though uh, your book and um, a lot of the work that you do in the world is about helping them transition in mm-hmm. passing to the next realm, you're really for, for every issue that an animal's having, you help the human connect and hear what the animal's trying to say and its behavior. Absolutely. And, and and in that place when when there's a real conversation going on uh based on love and respect, just like in the human world, everybody shifts and the and the and the energy or in the family shifts. Um it, you know, animals incredibly they respond to requests of the people and then the people respond to the needs of the animals. Um, I mean, it's just as simple as, you know, the little dog that's not using the um, pee pads, you know, they put out. Yes. Some some folks use the pee pads. And, and we got in there and talked to the dog, and, and he says, it's too small. I don't want to be stepping on my own pee or my butt. You know, there's two dogs in the family. My other guy's pee. So, you know, get him a bigger pee pad. <laughs> And it's something that we wouldn't think of because we would, for some of us, and and I'll talk about myself when I was younger, I wouldn't have even had the spiritual, emotional awareness to think that was possible, that the animal 
is unhappy, and that's what the behavior is, right? It, like, I wouldn't have yeah, made the connection right. that the behavior sometimes of them tr- trying to jump up and down, basically, and say, hey, um, hello, I'm trying to give you some information here, and you're not getting yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and um, so y- you've got that, you've got animals who are reacting to some of the stress that's in the family, uh, my my mentor calls that when they're being first responders. In other words, they're trying trying to help pull some of the bad and uh, I'm going to use that term bad energy. You know, the, yeah, I know what you mean. Dense oh, energy. Okay. So they're trying to pull it off. They're just trying to help you. They're trying to grab it off and take it off of you. And so some of that real you know ends up in bad behavior or or some some sometimes illness actually. I do know, and I witnessed it because I had a uh, freckles with a cocker spaniel. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's been gone a long time. So when I got him, it was 22 years ago. So I was in a different point in my life. And I was at that time running a different business. And it's so funny when you just said about feeding off the energy. At that time, yeah. I was one of those 14 hours a day, you know, um, I had a retail store, four rice coffees a day. Well, guess what? I had frenetic nonstop energy. So didn't he. And others, yeah. like other family members especially, would be like, your dog is a spaz, you can't trust him. And I'm like, what are you talking about? But as I shifted and went on the spiritual path, people that hadn't seen Freckles in a few years, Mary Beth, were like, is that the same dog or is that his son? Because your dog used to be like Cujo. And I said, <laughs> yeah, that you couldn't trust him, Mary Beth. But he was feeding oh. off my high energy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. imagine what the poor little guy felt like. As I shifted, yeah. I saw the transformation myself, the energetic transformation. He became zen like me, soothe. Um, people could t- go up to him again. It was I'm so glad you brought that up because it just brought back that memory of the power yeah. they have to pick up on our energy, which we then label their behavior as bad, but we have to look at the whole picture. We do. And it, it, I'm not taking away the fact that they are – they are souls in their own right. You know, they're not just mirrors of us, but it's, it's my analogy is like, it's like telling your dog or, no, the cat would not be in the water, but so your dog is standing in the stream and you say, don't get your feet wet. Well, hello. (laughs) (laughs) You know, they're living in our energy and how can they not be affected by it? You know, it's just, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, but they they've also got their own stuff going on. Tibor, my my latest uh, dog, he's a rescue dog. He came in with his own issues, and we had to work on those. And they they weren't related to specifically to my energy, other than you know we we attracted each other and we got each other together. But but he came in with some stuff, and I give him that right to have you know his own peculiar peculiar. Peculiarities, I know. I always get tongue tied yes, on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh man, you know, and uh, but I believe you, know, you two came together. Like he chose you because he knew you could help yes, him. Yes, we did. Yes, he did. And in fact, my dog, who Mitsubishi, who uh, passed before him, I actually connected to Mitsubishi and said, "Why did you leave us?" And he said, "He he was stern with me. He said, you've had me long enough." There's another dog that needs you. So, like, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. And then Tibor came into my life. Yeah. And, and because now what do you, you have two dogs and three cats, correct? I do. I do. Um, yeah, I got the cats after my daughter Andrea graduated from college, and she went off to India. And so the cats came, her two cats, two out of three, came with us. And I thought it was, um, the. I, I think the universe was laughing at me because when I joined the Navy, I got a, a dog in Puerto Rico, and my mom and dad took that dog when I went to Japan. So I like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you full circle, my friend, full circle. <laughs> yeah, I just laughed so hard. Um, and, you know, I knew before my husband did that those cats were permanent they weren't going anywhere (laughs) exactly and I I know I wanted to bring up a question that I think a lot of people have 
in regard to animal communication because a lot of it can be done mm-hmm. virtually. You don't have to be present. You don't have to have access to the animal, correct? Physical that access. That is correct. Um, no, um, and it, I, I, it's, that's a stumbling block for a lot of people. I, I get it. Um, it's, uh, let's see. What what it would, the connection we have is intuitive, psychic, telepathic. It, it's it's energetic. Um, it doesn't depend on any kind of physical touch or connection. It, although it, you can be in the room with them. I mean, there's nothing against it, but we're not hypnotizing them. Uh, they don't have to look into our eyes. They don't have to sit quietly at our feet. I do like getting a picture because the picture gives me um, a little bit of information and also helps me introduce myself and be able to see what the animal looks like. But I I find that I'm very good, maybe even better, doing remotes because I don't have the energy of the rest of the family. (laughs) Yeah, it's almost like... um, like you can be fully present in your energy, you envisioning the animal, and then you're sending your energy yeah. healing, and and yeah. co- and communicating from this place of just pure presence in love. Um, yes. And and because I, you know, I was a massage therapist, Reiki, and all that. I even humans, human to human, we've God remote healing has been done for many years, so. There's no difference with doing energy healing for animals remotely. So I wanted to bring that up so our listeners who say, oh, I wish, you know, Mary Beth was close by. I have an animal with issues that I know she or he is trying to tell me something. And I invite everyone to go to sacredgrove.com to learn more about Mary Beth's services. And when we come back from our break, We're going to dive into this juicy topic even more. And we'll be back in a moment with Mary Beth Decker of sacredgrove.com. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you ever wondered, what is my pet thinking? Or how is she feeling? You're not alone. The good news is that it is possible to intuitively communicate with your pets. Best-selling author Mary Beth Decker is an intuitive animal communicator and founder of sacredgrove.com, where people and pets heal and connect. Her book, Peace and Passing, Comfort for Loving Humans During Animal Transitions, is available at Amazon. Mary Beth works with people who love their animals as much as, or more than, the humans in their lives. She uses her abilities to address animals' issues which disrupt joyful cohabitation and loving connection. She's sought after to aid in animal transitions, whether it's helping your pet move into or away from your family or into the next life. Learn more at sacredgrove.com. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Hi, you're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And with me today is the best-selling author, Mary Beth Decker, an animal communicator who uses the intuition, energy healing, and just her real, because I know you and I can say this from my heart, this pure sacred intent. And that's why I'm so excited to have you on the show because that's the energy I tapped into when we first connected. So, And I believe we all uncover what we're truly meant to do, and this is what you are meant to do. It is. So it's yeah. – go ahead. What were you going to say, Mary? Yeah. No, it's it's just been such a funny road. It's like this is my third career, but not a – I don't know. You don't know about butts. But it's it feels like the best one. I had to do some other things. That you, you talk about bucket lists, and I had some – bucket list before I could get here <laughs> we I all have I think I think we all have this journey like I if you <laughs> asked me if I would ever be the publisher of a spy magazine or have 10 best-selling books and serve extraordinary clients no it was never my plan but I kept following my trust and my intuition and it led me to my soul's purpose and I'm noticing in on many of the conversations Mary Beth that I have on the show and privately a lot of the women in my circle, they're like, that's how I want it to unfold. So it sounds like that's what happened for you. It's like you you allowed you, your soul, your essence, to lead the way, and it unfolded into exactly what you're doing now, which is so aligned. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for, for voicing that because, um, you know, there's still the judging part of me that says uh, – you, you know, when people say, how long have you been doing this? And they, they look at me physically and they think it's, I'm going to say 40 years. And I'll say, I'm about 10 years. And, you know, I have to get. No. But, but it, I had to do a few other things first. And well, I had to find, I think that's for you know, all of us, Mary Beth. It's, you yeah. can't. Okay. Don't judge the past or your journey, right? And I, I, I tell that to all right. my guests because everything, like your career in the Navy for all those decades and everything that came after that was to give you the skill set, break down the barriers that would have prevented you from communicating intuitively with your animals. You had to have those experiences to make you gifted at what you do. Same with me, same with anyone else on this path. Our past is what makes us relatable and authentic now in this life because we have all those gifts that we learned and also the wounds that allowed us to heal. So no, I would look back um, and say it was preparing you for this. You oh, know, thank it, you. I feel like I just got a healing. Yay! <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. So let's talk a little more because your book, um, "Peace in Passing: Comfort for Loving Humans During Animal Transitions," what led you to write the book? Is that what you were doing a lot of work on at the time? Because just the name, "Peace in Passing," it's like that's the gift everyone's asking for, right? Yes. Uh, what what I noticed when I was w- working with people uh, is I I I was so clear on how difficult it is for those of us who love our animals to go through the transition process, and and the reason is that uh, we're making we're making a lot of progress in respect for people's relationship with their animals, but still you'll still hear. It was just an animal. Come on, or um, and people won't get that that they're our animals. Uh, you know, if you looked at a percentage of time, you get unconditional love from animals versus humans in our lives. Animals win hands down. Yes, <laughs> they do. You know what I mean? So, so they do, and and that relationship does not always get honored. In the human world, you know, uh, I've been in an association where you would get, you know, five days off grieving uh, if somebody, had, uh, mom and dad, you know, a relative died. Mm-hmm. You get no day, time off for an animal. Um, then on top of this, you make a decision about when and how you're going to end your animal's life. How difficult is that? So you, there's there's a burden there, and the people feel guilt, and they feel worry. They wonder if their animal, they're, they're, they sincerely wonder if their animal is angry at them, if they've forgiven them, if they waited too a long. I, I'm putting it all because I'm hurt at all. 
they waited too long, they went too fast, they, you know, they did it sooner than they should have. And, and I just wanted to address that through storytelling of, with, with the animals that I'd worked with and people I'd worked with. And, um, that's so what, that's what's beautiful about your piece. book because it's real stories of the communication you've had with animal, animals on some of these topics, right, mm-hmm. with your clients. And yes. that's what gives you peace. That's why I love the name of the book, by the way. Um, because sometimes we need to hear another person's story. And I think this is, goes without saying for everything in life. When we hear another person's sacred truth and feel the emotions behind it and sharing those stories about an animal's conversation with its human and vice versa, I think it allows us to see the possibility, especially for someone that's, you know, not fully aware of animal communication. So that's why I love the, yeah. the part of storytelling in your book. Thanks, and it, it and it was so wonderful because the pe the the <coughs> excuse me the stories that you that are in the book people were excited about sharing with their animals because they loved them so much it was a way of memorializing them you know and um, sharing their unique personalities uh, you know beyond beyond just their own family and and um, there's just so many good stories in there I uh, just love them. Um, and if someone wants to talk a little bit about energy healing and, and what it okay. consists of and what you do or what it's called, any terminology you may use, to help our listeners mm-hmm. understand um, how it would feel to work with you. Okay. So so if you, if you were working with me, um, I would I would get a picture uh, of the animal ahead of time, your dog, your cat, your horse, your rabbit, what, you know. And I would look at it, and I would introduce myself, and I would get some feelings about uh, their their personality ahead of time, or their maybe their issues. And then we would connect. And if uh, if there if there were emotional issues, uh, although I let's see, I'll back check. If although I started as a Reiki master, I've done a taking courses in a number of modalities and at this point um, I use whatever seems to work best and I uh, I I do whatever do whatever it takes really so a lot of times if there's a emotional issues like um, there's past the some of the past is still presenting itself now I will look and see into the the chakra center, the energy centers in their bodies, and see how they look. And uh, I I will look and see if they look healthy, or they they look they look um, closed or shattered or brittle or you know whatever. And and I'll do because each one each one represents to me a certain emotional traits. Uh, and I will, the other thing I do is uh, imaginative work with the animal, like show them, here's the past, here's you could be, here's how you could be in the future. Uh, I'll do energy work for the body symptoms. Uh, I will focus on parts of the body and see them working better, uh, decreasing pain. Um and I'll go back to the people to see see if we can help release any any emotions that um, that uh, don't shift that haven't shifted. That would you know if the animals changed, then it's good if the person does too. I've done um, EFT tapping for both the animal and people to to help release uh, issues. That's another one that I do. Do do the chakra balancing. Do imaginative work uh, about releasing um, ties or pieces that are from the past and letting the the new improved uh, animals pop in, you know, um, if that makes sense. I mean, I see like an old worn out animal and then we see a new new animal and, and that's emotionally, you know, if there's a there's an animal who has um, some past issues of, of abuse and things like that. 
When we come back from our break, Mary Beth, I'd love to hear one of the stories of a transformation in one of the animals that you've worked with. If it was a behavior issue, like the, the communication you had with them and the end result, you don't have to use the person's name if you don't desire, but so someone can hear mm-hmm. the transformation um, and hear what it feels like, what it sounds like to hear from an animal. And um, we'll do that in the last segment. And I'll be back in a moment with the extraordinary Mary Beth Decker of sacredgrove.com. Be sure to swing by her site to learn more about her book, Peace in Passing, as well as all of her amazing services to help you and your pet reconnect with love. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Deborah Keevan is a writer, editor, and storyteller who serves visionary entrepreneurs by helping them create and share their compelling client attraction stories. In some cases, these stories appear as copy on their websites, other times in their blogs or books. As an associate editor at Inspired Living Publishing and with her personal clients, Debbie creates a safe space for entrepreneurs to fully explore and own their stories. By integrating their dark and light, they shine brighter to make a bigger impact globally and in their communities. Deborah is particularly drawn to stories of struggle and uses language to aid in healing journeys, including her own. If you have a story burning to be told, you're invited to visit her website and schedule a virtual coffee date at DebraKeevan.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Me, a cat moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is Mary Beth Decker, intuitive animal communicator and best selling author, uh, and also the founder of SacredGrove.com, where people and pets heal and connect. So, Mary Beth, is there a story coming up that we can share in the last segment of maybe one of the stories from your book? of a transformation that took place or a conversation that was had that just gave the owners, the humans, some insight to move forward. Okay. So um, let, let me let me do um, one from the book because I really I like, like my story with my friend Debbie, um, who's also a client, friend first, client, and kind of that sort of thing. Um, this is Debbie in, in Buffalo with her cat, Chasworth. Uh, we started working with Chasworth when he w- she didn't think he was doing very well. And um, I'll, I'll tell the whole story because it's kind of cute. So when we first connected to Chasworth, Chasworth, <laughs> Chasworth told me, he, he said, and here I'm telling everybody, but he told me confidentially sort of, you know we're married, don't you? I said, what? I know, <laughs> Debbie, she's not into that. <laughs> I love so, it. I said, Debbie, do you know what Chasworth thinks you're married? And she, she's got a good sense of humor. And she says, well, you know, um, I am a single woman, and he's the only man in my life. Uh, he sleeps on my bed. And um, I do have his picture at the office. So, you know, and... <laughs> In his in mind, he had stepped into that role, energetically. He had stepped into that role, energetically. And, and, you know, she just hadn't thought of it that way. But but it was a very close relationship, and she felt that he was, you know, a pretty special cat in her life. There, there, you know, how people will tell you that there are certain, certain 
animals that come through that there's just something there. So when he was not feeling well, we went in and uh, checked on how he was doing, and I, and I gave her some information of, of physical body. He showed me a picture that was apropos to buffalo, because if you know buffalo, you should be thinking snow. You should think snow because there is a lot of snow in Buffalo. So it show, he showed me him, uh, and I actually drew the picture in there, uh, standing on a fo- two fo- front legs, standing on a toboggan with a jaunty little scarf wrapped around him, and it's fluttering in the back. So the, it's clear to me that toboggan is going down this snowy hill, and it's going fast. And he's looking excited and happy. And at the time, we, we weren't sure what that meant. But as he started to deteriorate, I, I called Debbie and said, Debbie, you know what he was telling us? And she goes, no, no. I said, he said he's going downhill fast and he's happy about it. Oh. So, right? So yeah. what the, this gift if if you think of your put yourself in Debbie's place, so what she should do is, he was saying to her that he was not holding on to his body, and I'm I'm almost getting lightheaded as I'm reconnecting to this. He was ready to transition, and he wasn't going to fight it. He was happy about it, um, and so that made her her decision. And so much easier. Now she, he wasn't to the point where he was ready to go, but she she had that information in her back pocket. So when the time came that you know that it was very clear to her that he wasn't enjoying life anymore, um, we connected again, and what he told me this time was he said, "I don't want to die alone," and I I cried really because that's yeah. a tough thing to tell your friend. Yes. And and it made so much sense because, as I told you, it was it was just him and Debbie, and she went off to work every day. So you could see a scenario where she might come home, and he had he had passed on. So she made it made it an a, a priority to make sure she got him into the vet, and she was with him when he passed. Yes, that was important to us too. It, so I understand. Look at the gift you gave her, though. If you hadn't given her these two messages, one, she wouldn't have even known he was ready, right? And then, Mm -hmm. two, the second message was she would have missed that moment, that opportunity to to be with him as he passed. So what a beautiful gift. You know, it was. And I saw how much peace that gave her and so she did not go through you you always have your guilt guilt yes of i mean course. grief but you don't have the guilt right right um and that gave her know, peace I, to be able to move on and allow um chaz to move on absolutely um and, and that's the power in this work maybe yeah. beth yeah that's the yeah, power in animal communication and energy healing and all the work that you're doing. And it's, there are so many of us out there that our animals are a part of our soul tribe, our family, and the essence. So, you know, everyone listening right now, and many of them, of course, are going to be attracted to the Inspired Conversation show. So for those who are listening now with us or on the replay, I invite you If you've been wondering what your animal is thinking, visit Mary Beth at sacredgrove.com and get more information, enjoy your website, um, pick up a copy of her book because your animals are communicating with you. And and there is so much, they have so much wisdom to share, right? Not just about their passing, but about everything, about what they're feeling, what they're thinking, and, you know, how they want to guide you in your life. Have you found messages like that, too? Because that's some of the stuff I picked up from Freckles. Are they ever communicating, like, hey, there's a lot of stuff going on in the house, Mary. You know, do they talk <laughs> about stuff like yes. that? Yeah, you know what? It's um, it, it, it's not the um, – well, let's see. For me, it has been looking at 
that the animals from a physical perspective or something else is having a little more insight. Like there was, there was a point in the house when we had four animals and every single one of them had gooey eyes. You know, when you, if you have animals, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Gooey eyes, as my mom would say. And I looked at that and said, how can that be? And um, so my intuition kicked in and I heard this, the old song, uh, Jackson Brown song, uh, Doctor, My Eyes Have Seen Too Much. And I meditated on that, and uh, I realized that there were some truths about my relationship with my husband that I had had not fully integrated. And we're still married, so it wasn't like a bad ending or anything. No, I know what you mean, but... Okay, good. Hiding something <laughs> under the rug spiritually or emotionally or energetically doesn't do any of us good. We all have done it. No. Yeah, no. So it was time for me to pull that out, take a look at it, uh, digest it spiritually, uh, and come more in alignment to, to with what was the truth about um, us in our relationship. And... Um, and, and I did see their eyes clear up. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, zip zap, but they did go, it did go away. And so. Um, now imagine having the that. insight to yeah. hear that, right? And then, yeah. most importantly, just like anything in life, you took inspired action to start to shift things. Yes, I did. Yeah. And that's beautiful. And I, I laugh because um, the the cat that we have, the one that's 17, um, like energetically, we have two cats, and energetically, one is the rough and rumble. I this is how I I feel his energy. He's a highly Harley riding contractor with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, leather coat on, kind of from the fifties. Like, get out of my way, you know. <laughs> this is my turf. Don't mess with it. And he guards his this his territory. And then we have Baxter, who's seventeen, who is a love bug. Metro male, very sensitive, like artistic energy, just loves everyone and is the biggest love bug and cuddler. That's the energy that I feel from each one. And Dana says the same thing. So it's funny how you can feel when you really tap into them and look in their eyes, you can feel them, the, the truth of who they are outside that body. Absolutely. And um, I think that we're all capable of that. And all, all it is is... is getting a little quiet and letting it in, you know, and also getting rid of the mindset that they're not that deep. You know, they are. They are. There's there's, there's a lot more than treats going on, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah. In the last moment, I think I feel led to share a story as we come to a close. It was just a short story with my granddaughter. She was four at the time. Not yeah, probably three and a half, and you know the the dandelions you blow and make a wish, and she's yeah. a sensitive, she's wide open, so she says, "I'm a make a wish, and I blow, and she does hers, and of course, I go, you know, we say, "What did you wish?" Her little eyes I want to get emotional, filled like filled with tears, and she said, "Amma." I wish that I could hear what every animal can say so I can give them what they need. I was like, are you kidding me? I never forgot that. She connects with the birds. She can call in the butterflies. And that moment showed me this hope for this world with the next generation of open, loving children. And now she's six and a half. And that love for animals is still there. Um, And... And that moment is when I just said, yes, you know, we we need more souls and spirits like that coming into the world. So thank you for allowing me to share that story, but also for the work that you're doing in the world to open up these conversations, to open up um, everyone's eyes and hearts to what our animals are here to teach. So thank you, my friend. Oh, yes, and thanks for sharing that story. That gives me so much hope to hear that. Well, that's, that's our wish for the future, isn't yeah, it? They're, they're it? Yeah, yeah. And I want to thank that's everyone for being here today. And I invite everyone, head to sacredgrove.com, learn more about Mary Beth's work, her book, her services. And 
share the love when you get there. Mary Beth, thank you again for being here. Oh, it was wonderful. Thank you so much for, for letting me share my stories and what I do. It's been so great. Well, thank you, my friend. And until next time, everyone, choose love, choose joy, and choose happiness, my friends. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.